Can he get the momentum off the exit? Tim Edge will go again. Good exit speed. The action continues from Manfield. Race two for the BNTV 8s. Don't go away. We'll be back with more after this. Kane Scott sideways all over the back of Timmy Edgel. Lap seven of 12. Race two for the BNTV 8s. What do you reckon, Mark? Five laps to go, it's still anybody's. That Timmy's car looks like it's just starting to go off here and there. Running a little bit wide, just not getting the power down as well as he was in the first couple of laps. But that's not unexpected because at this point, lap seven of 12, the tyres are screaming, guys, I've had enough. I want to get off this car, put some new sets on me. The brakes, they're a magnificent package. They won't be suffering from those. The gearboxes, they'll be using the engines to slow the cars down. Inside the temperature, Jamie, maybe 48 up to 50 degrees inside the cabins. There's very little cooling. These guys are throwing everything at it, and you can understand why it's very easy to make a mistake. There's the game face from Kane Scott. You'll see he's grabbing his helmet, a little bit of sweat, probably making the helmet move inside his head, although they've got balaclavas on. But, yeah, five laps to go. It's anybody's, but I think Kane will just keep putting the pressure on Timmy. Let's hope Timmy can sustain it. Angus Fogg now going to work on Matt Lockwood for the eighth position. There's John McIntyre. He is now up into the tenth position. It's a good comeback, and uh, there would have been a lot of work going on in the pits to change that, basically, effectively, the whole rear end of that race car and rear suspension. Well, it depends what other damage it's done as well, but the good thing is they got it turned over, so whatever broke, they had enough spare parts to fix. Yeah. But what they can do is that sometimes you concentrate so much on repairing the damage that you don't have the opportunities to improve the car from the information learned from race one, but it doesn't really seem to be hurting them. He's up to 11th place, starting from the back of the field. And this fog's there is an eighth. One spot behind Craig Beard, who's batting for the championship. So, look, that wreck and race one hurt him, but he's certainly coming back. So Tim Angel's just set his fastest lap of the race on lap seven, a 113.654. He was two tenths of a second quicker than Kane Scott. Scott with the fastest lap of the race at a 113.571. So it's just sort of seesawing backwards and forwards here. Try and work out the points connotations for you between Fogg and Beard, but certainly Angus Fogg making some big inroads. Battles for the back, Martin Short and Paul Manuel for the 14th and 15th positions. On board with Martin Short. Reigning New Zealand Formula 4 champion in the zone forward. Some interesting company in front of him. We've got Nick Ross there, Eddie Bell. This disastrous season really continues here, of course, Simon Richards. So Martin is actually about to get joined by some very illustrious company in there with those three hard charges. Just looking at Craig Beard and Angus Fogg in seventh and eighth. Craig is going to get a three-point gain, so the championship just seven points at the moment as Short gets a big run to the outside of Nick Ross, who looked to be maybe slowing on the inside onto the front straight. Oh, God, there is everywhere. Nick Ross has been defensive. It's kind of the meat and the sandwich here. Eddie Bell, watch out. Martin Short's there. Nick Ross will follow suit, and I dare say... Run him out of room on the outside, and Paul Manuel will probably get the spot too. So Eddie Bell getting shuffled back a few positions. Getting towards the business end of race number two. The championship down to seven points. Nick Ross sideways through the S's towards Splash. Manuel's on the grass trying to get up the inside of Nick Ross. Contend this all the way to the hairpin. Here's Eddie Bell. So Martin Short's on a bit of a charge here. Now lines up Simon Richards. Short starting from grid position 18. Tim Edgel looks to have just taken control. If anything, he's got away from Kane Scott in the last couple of laps. The gap out to about a second as Martin Short goes to work on Simon Richards for the 11th position. The luxury Kane Scott's got us. He can actually back off a little bit, maybe 90% of what he was doing before. Let the tyres cool off a bit to mount a challenge for the last two laps. Tim Edgel, he doesn't have that luxury, Jamie. He's got to keep charging 110% to try to get a bit of a buffer. So, oh, here we go, run down the inside. Craig Baird on Andy Booth. This is a point for Craig Baird, and it's going to be three wide. Who's on the outside there? McLaughlin, Boothy there. Craig Baird get advantage. Now watch Rangus Falk on the inside here. No too far back. So Craig Baird up into the fifth position. So he's picked up a couple of spots. That's important. That's going to close the championship, championship up even tighter. with McLaughlin chasing down Andy Booth. This is uh, familiar signs from a couple of rounds ago where Andy gave Scotty yeah, some exactly. tips about driving and where to pass. And uh, Scotty 
immediately got in front of him and didn't let Boothie by. Apparently Boothie's caught a fast learner because he never took the opportunity up to shove around another circuit again. Back on board with McLaughlin. Boothie car looks a bit ragged there, he's starting to run wide. Maybe just the tyre's gone off a little bit, but we know that car of Boothie's is quick in the first part of the race, struggles towards the last quarter, which we're in now. What can McLaughlin do? Look for a run down the inside. Probably doesn't know about this move yet because he's been here long enough. Boothie's car a little bit off the apex there. He's came he's got down the inside. Yeah, no. He's come back to Timmy Angel who runs a little bit wide off the exit. This could be the opportunity for Kane Scott. No Angel. Uh, shuts he him just, down. Yeah, he's just, bit, he's just moves over a little bit. Didn't get a touch. Come over a bit more. Still not a touch. Slams the door shut on him. Well, Kane Scott took four tenths of a second out of the race lead in the last lap. So. Edgel just running a little bit wide down into one is now under attack from the two-time former series champ. Run down the inside here. This is just kind of a drag race. Timmy Edgel, of course, on the third line. Coming into turn six, which is known as Higgins. So I don't think much of this, but where this is going to happen, Jamie, on the exit of turn six. Watch for the crossover. I think Kane's, Kane's too high upside him. Hard right, look for the inside running. Turn yeah, him ahead, yeah, he's yeah, roll out of the throttle, but... Timmy comes across, defends it, good blocking. Racing. Well, we've got the last lap board coming out, so Tim Edgel trying to hold off. Kane Scott, this is the track that uh, Timmy Edgel got picked him. up his first win. And Scott's got down the inside. I'm wrong, he didn't. Didn't have the momentum. I think Timmy Edgel just took a breath and ran it in a little bit deeper as the last lap board comes out. One to go for race two for the BNTV 8s. The battle for the race leads. Wade Henshaw in third, Andy Knight in fourth. Craig well, Bench crossover, fifth. yeah. Oh, it's two sideways. Not going to get advantage of that. See what happened in the middle of the corner. Jamie Kane Scott stopped this car dead like we see it in Yachty. Hard to the other side of the track trying to get the crossover. Didn't work. Running out of options here. The next one is coming to the hairpin. Too far back to try that move at the moment. Craig Baird with a seven-point swing. The championship is down to three points. In favour of Angus Fogg. Right, here we go. Kane Scott's got it. Only two opportunities left. Coming into turn six. Too far back. Rightio, now watch this. He's just going to go hard right. Right now, look for the crossover. Nah, Timmy, just too smart for that, but he would have lost a bit of drive on the back straight. Just put your head in wheel spin there, maybe. Yeah, Kane he's Scott using, up the exit too. You're right, he's using first gear, which is surprising this late in the race because the rear tyres don't have much grip. Look for the run down the inside. We saw it the lap before, but nothing come of it. He's not close enough. Tim Edgel's going to take this out. Take your hat off, young man. You deserve this race win. Something about Manfield for Tim Edgel. He polled last year and won his first race. He's going to win race number two of the BTV 8s from Kane Scott, who tried everything in that last lap to get around the Chester's Ford. Wade Henshaw crosses the line in third, ahead of Andy Knight in fourth. Craig Baird fifth. Angus Fogg crosses in seventh. The championship is just three points. Angus Fogg over Craig Baird, but more importantly for Kane Scott, he's also eked back into that points lead. It continues to get tighter. He does. Kane Scott now only 33 points back, so 33 points separate. Angus Fogg to Kane Scott. What a turnaround of rents for all three of those guys. So Tim Edgel with the victory from Kane Scott. A fantastic race. Race rate Henshaw in third. Andy Knight fourth. That was a good comeback after an engine change between races one and two. Craig Baird fifth. Scott McLaughlin sixth. One of his best performances of the championship with Angus Fogg seventh all the way from grid position 19. Well, I know Manfield has been a happy hunting ground for you in the past, but by golly, you had to work for that one, didn't you? Sure it did. Uh, I'm really, really happy with the boys, you know. Ironically, we don't probably have the fastest car this weekend, but, you know, I worked my butt out there for that race win, and, uh, you know, it's really good. It's really good to be turning things around, and uh, hopefully we can move on. Is, is this just the wide-body model I thought it was out there? Yeah, it was the last three or four laps. She'd moved to a little couple inches wider, but, uh, you know, you're allowed to do that, so uh, why not? Hey, good to see you smiling. Well done, Timmy. Thanks, mate.